So today what we're going to be working with is chords and arcs. So what's a chord? That's a chord, right? It's a segment that has endpoints on the circle. So let's call this A, B. And then let's create another chord over here. We'll call it C, D. If I tell you that these two chords are congruent, what else do we know? Can it? That's a really good guess. We can't prove that yet, but it's true. Yeah. The arcs are congruent. Well done. So in other words, if I were to find the center of this, let's say this is circle X, and I connect X to C and X to D, what are these segments, XC and XD? What do we call those? Radii, good. And they're going to be the same length, right? Because all the radius of a circle are the same length. And wouldn't XA and XB also be the same lengths? So what can we say about these two triangles? They are congruent. They are congruent. Why? Uh, I like someone else's three-letter justification. Side, 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 right? We've got two sides and a third side. So these two triangles are congruent because of side, side, side. <clears throat> and then because they're congruent, what can we say about these angles? Well, not quite. Not quite, because these lines aren't continuous. Are these two triangles congruent? Are these corresponding parts in congruent triangles? CPCTC, right? Good. And if they're congruent by CPCTC, oh, sorry, didn't mean to inter interrupt you. Um, if in fact these are corresponding angles in two congruent triangles, then won't they be congruent too by CPCTC? Yes. Now, if this angle is, I don't know, let's say 50 degrees, how big would this arc be? Yeah, this is a central angle. So wouldn't the arc be the same size? And if this angle were congruent, also 50 degrees, how big would this arc be? Right. So in other words, if you've got two chords that are congruent in a circle, then the arcs intercepted by those chords will also be congruent. So let's put that into our notes for today. Two chords are congruent if and only if. What does if and only if do for us? means it's a good definition, good, because we're biconditional. Nice. Uh, let me just get this page up. So in other words, two chords are congruent if and only if there are corresponding arcs. Are congruent. In other words, if I know that AB segment is congruent to CD segment, then biconditionally, I also know that arc AB is congruent to arc CD. All right, let's take a look at a circle again. And again, I'm gonna talk about two different chords that are congruent in that same circle. What if I asked you to find the distance from this center point to this segment CD, this chord? How would you find that distance? What would it mean? 
Is it x to c? Is it x to d? Is it x to some other point? Would you say this point is the distance away from this segment that's equivalent to x to d? Or is that further? Yeah. When we talk about distance, what we talk about is the shortest distance. So we'd take a perpendicular segment, a part of a radius that goes there. And what can we say about this? Well, if I connect A to C, excuse me, this is X. If I connect the point C and X, what do we call that segment again? Radius, good. And D to X is the same. So these two lengths are the same. And if I drew this perpendicular as I did to make it the distance, the altitude, it's going to be perpendicular on this side. And what do we know about X? And I don't know what this point would be, maybe E. What about this segment XE in these two triangles? Remember reflexive? So what's true about these two triangles? They're congruent. By what reasoning? Well, almost. Side side angle doesn't work for us though. Remember that's ASS? That's ASS, we can't use that. But it's not side angle side because we'd have to go. It's not side 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 because we don't know this third one. Remember, we can prove triangles congruent with S, 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 A, S, A, S, A, 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 S, and R, R, H, L. When we have a right angle and we have the hypotenuse and the leg, is that what we've got here? Yeah. Right angles, hypotenuse, and leg. And again, sometimes that's just called H, L. But these two triangles are congruent by what I call R, H, L. And what if I then talk about, well, so if these two triangles are congruent, what do we know about CE and DE? CE and DE, what do we know about them? They're also congruent. In other words, let's go to C here. If a diameter or a radius is perpendicular to a chord, then it does what to the chord? What do we do with this picture? What did this diameter or radius that's perpendicular do to this chord? Bisects, good. Then it bisects the chord and its arc. Because if this bisects into two congruent triangles, then aren't these two angles congruent? And these are central angles because they're formed at the center. Please stop the side conversations. So if these two central angles are congruent, then the arcs that these angles meet would also be congruent. So therefore, if EH is perpendicular to AB, EH is perpendicular to AB, then we know that AF and BF are congruent. It's been bisected. And we know that arc AH would be congruent to BH. And then let's go back to this picture again that I drew a moment ago. I did that to this chord, CD. We haven't yet done the same thing to this chord, but I could. If I knew that A, B, and C, D were the same, I could connect these with radii here. And then I could draw a perpendicular line down this isosceles triangle. And what would it do to A, B? It would bisect it. And then what would that mean about this leg relative to this leg? In other words, X, I don't know, 
F versus XE. Do those have to be congruent? Is ABX congruent to XCD? Yes. Not phrased that way, I guess ABX would be CDX. But yes, they're congruent, in which case our altitudes of the two triangles consider corresponding parts of congruent triangles. So that by CPCTC, those two altitudes would actually be congruent. This is the same length as this, if these chords are the same length. So this is the third piece for today's notes. It says that if the two chords are equal, then they are equidistant from the center. In other words, if we know that A, B, and C, D are congruent chords, then the distance EF and EG would be the same. So this is a small packet today. It's just two sides, but I'll take you through some examples of each type. Number one, I see here that these two chords are marked as congruent. And if the chords are marked as congruent, then the arcs are also congruent. I see X, that tells me I have to create an equation. So what would be my equation here? If these two chords are the same, then their corresponding arcs are also the same. So 7x plus 24 would equal 115. Minus 24. 7x equals 91. Divide by 7. x equals 13. Any questions on number one? Take a look at number five, please. We see X's, so we have to create equations. What's our equation? Hmm. So you said that since these two chords are congruent, their arcs would be congruent. So if this one's 6x minus 20, I'd know that this one is 6x minus 20. And then he took it one step further and said all of the measures of the arcs around the circle add up to 360. So if I take this plus this plus that, it should equal 360. And then I'll combine like terms, 12x minus 40 and plus 76 is plus 36 equals 360. Subtract 36 from both sides. I don't want 12 X's, I want just one. And what do I get, 27? Take a look at number six, please. <clears throat> Any thoughts on number six?
What are we given? What do they tell us is congruent? Girls, please be quiet. These two arcs are congruent. What does that mean? If those arcs are congruent, then what else is congruent? Then the chords are congruent. And if the chords are congruent, what does that mean about these perpendicular segments going to the center? Those are also congruent. In other words, these congruent chords are equidistant from the center. And they give us expressions about MP and NP or PN. Those are supposed to be congruent. So we would just set those equal. In other words, if the arcs are congruent, then the corresponding chords are congruent. If the chords are congruent, then their distance to the centers are congruent. Therefore, these expressions can be set equal. And it does take it one more step. It says, don't just find X, but find out what MP is. So we have to plug it back in to the expression associated with MP, five times 10 minus 34. Any questions on this side, five or six? Last one I want to show you is number 13 here. We're supposed to find VW. What do we see in there? What's enticing to us? The right angle? What do you think, Kenny? Good. X, Y, because it's perpendicular, bisects VW. So whatever that length is, is the same as that length. Would you guys stop talking, please? So whatever this side is will be the same as this part. So how can I find this part? Yeah, Pythagorean theorem. And in fact, we could use something called Pythagorean triples. Do you remember that from the last review packet? I introduced Pythagorean triples and said that sometimes we use Pythagorean theorem values that are easier to work with. If I have a side length of three and a side length of four, how could I find this hypotenuse? Sure, three squared plus four squared equals X squared. Nine plus 16 equals X squared. 25 equals X squared. In other words, X equals five. What great easy numbers to work with. Three, four, and five. Does that always happen? If I've got another triangle over here with like four and five, is this hypotenuse gonna be six? Four squared is 16 plus five squared is 25. That's 41. So this is 41. Most of our triangles that are right triangles don't end up looking like nice integers, three, four, five. When they do, that's called a Pythagorean triple and it makes things easy. <clears throat> because this ratio allows you to have a right triangle. What if I had a 30, a 40, what would be this third side to be in the same proportion? Sure. What if I had six, eight? Three times two is six, four times two is eight, five times two is 10. That would also be a right triangle. So this is called a Pythagorean triple when the three numbers are nice whole numbers that work. 
And they're often multiples of three, four, five, when you're looking at like SAT test questions, they often use these numbers. Another one that we use is five, 12, and 13. It's another Pythagorean triple. So here it is, we got five and 13. What's the missing side length? 12. And if we're looking for the whole length, it's just two of those. So 12 plus 12 is 24. What about YW though? We're looking for the measure of arc YW. What would you like me to give you so that you could know the measure of YW really easy? Angle X, right? This YXW, if you knew that angle was 50 degrees, how big would this arc be? 50 degrees, be super easy. So if we knew that angle, let's call it angle X, we'd be all set. But this problem is so, thank you. This is SOKATOA. This is your last unit. Please use SOKATOA and solve for angle X. All right, you've got the rest of the period to work on this worksheet. Both sides are doing your homework in Canvas, please. Yeah.